Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wikipedia Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Lee, also known as user Fuzzheado on English Wikipedia. So welcome to another episode of Wikipedia Weekly, where we're talking to some of the major folks in our movement. And we're really glad today to have an innovative project uh, on about talking about archaeology, archae architecture, and all kinds of neat things that we're doing with Wikidata. But before we get started, this is the Wikipedia Weekly Network, where we are bringing in voices and community projects for discussion. This is being streamed live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope and Twitter, and also Twitch for those folks who are in the gaming world. So on any of those platforms, you are welcome to comment and to give feedback. And we can actually surface those comments on the screen and talk about them or answer any questions that you might have. So we're more than happy to do that. If you're on Facebook, you will be able to see your name and your face in the icon that we bring up on the screen if you go to streamyard.com slash Facebook. So that is something that we are going to be um, asking folks to do if they want to be identified. Uh, and that's something that is um, so easy to do. If you add those comments, we'll see them and we can bring them up. So I am very happy today to bring in our guest mm -hmm. and it is Nasima Shaboon from the uh, uh, Wiki Kasor project and from Wikimedia Morocco. Let me bring in her, her now. There we go. Hi, Nasima. How are you doing? Uh, hello. hello, everyone. I'm good. <laughs> I hope you are uh, good and safe. So uh, I'm Nasima Shahboun, also known on Wikipedia as Nasima Shahboun. Uh, and I'm an architect and founder of Wikixor project. And I'm also a member of Wikimedia Morocco user group. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And we also have Richard Thank Nipel you. from New York. Richard, you want to introduce Hi. yourself? Glad to join as well. Uh, user Ferris on Wikimedia projects and uh, glad to join Nasima and talk about her project. Yeah, and we, you know, Nasima and I have an interesting story because we actually, <laughs> it's, we'll get into it, but it's really fun. And Nasima's been doing this amazing work um, in Northern Africa. And we wanted to have her talk a little bit about the project uh, because it's got to do with mapping, with imaging, and actually field work as well. So, Nasima, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got introduced to the Wikimedia community? Because it's quite interesting. Not everyone kind of jumps in from the, heritage side directly. Some people will get involved with editing articles a little bit here and there, but you had an interesting introduction to the community. Uh, well, uh, before introducing how I joined the movement, I will uh, explain what is the project about because yeah, yeah. Wikixor is kind of a weird name for a uh, non-Arabic person. Uh, so Wiki, uh, uh, Wiki is known by everyone and Xor uh, are fortified villages in uh, northern African countries uh, in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Mauritania. Uh, and these villages are key components of the heritage of the countries, but unfortunately, uh, they are not protected and uh, very few of them are listed as uh, national or international heritage. Uh, so they are key components of our heritage, but that are unfortunately endangered and abandoned. Uh, and uh, the project is about documenting uh, these villages. Uh, so now let's talk about my story of joining Wikipedia and Wikimedia movement. Um, I was interested in volunteering since 2012 when I joined the architecture school for the first year. Uh, and I contributed to uh, many rehabilitation projects, uh, especially in rural and remote areas. And uh, since 2015, I started organizing rehabilitation workshops. And at the time, the major challenge that faced us was the access to information about the historical sites, especially when it comes to some sites that are not listed as UNESCO World Heritage or as National Heritage. Uh, and the uh, access of, to information was very hard in terms of uh, time, of efforts, and of money, because um, references related to architecture and history were quite expensive, and it was hard to get them uh, for one project. Uh, and uh, this gave me, the first, for the first time, the idea of uh, there should be some platform, some digital platform that enables uh, information gathering and information pooling in order to be used in such uh, volunteer projects. 
Uh, and in 2018, I uh, met a Moroccan Wikimedian by coincidence, uh, who is Anas Sidrati, known by many of you, I think. And he introduced me uh, the movement and what is behind Wikipedia, because before I was always reading articles on Wikipedia, but I didn't know that there were, uh, Wikipedia has some sister projects, and uh, I didn't know that there is a whole community behind Wikipedia. And actually, that's what encouraged me to join Wikipedia as a contributor and also to join the movement and to launch some offline projects. So I joined in September 2018 and I launched, I launched the project uh, around March 2019. Neat. And, and it's something that, um, that we can take a look at in a second. But what, what got you... Um, as you said, you didn't know about all these sister projects and all these partner mm -hmm. projects. What were some of the things that surprised you the most when you started looking behind the scenes? Uh, actually, the, the network of people and the, the support that the foundation gives to projects is just amazing. Uh, because uh, before uh, joining the movement, I was trying to launch a digital platform that enables some site mapping and also uh, gathering information, uh, graphic and written information about heritage sites. And uh, it turned out that project will be very expensive in terms of cost, and it will need a lot of maintenance and a lot of updating, and it won't be uh, possible for someone who does it just in, um, like I was doing this in my uh, in my free time, uh, to to uh, uh, to accompany the project to to the end. But when it comes to uh, using Wikimedia platforms, like we already have the, the platforms that are ready, uh, and we have also financial support and technical support, and it is important for the, um, uh, the sustainability of any projects of this kind. Right, and tell us a little bit about Kasor mm -hmm. and what that, that technically uh, describes and what kinds of things you're doing with that. Uh, so, uh, Qsur, as I said, are historical villages in Morocco and uh, other North African uh, uh, countries. Uh, and they are located in the southern regions of these countries. And these regions are the most uh, vulnerable regions, either in Morocco or in um, the other Maghreb countries. Uh, and uh, the idea behind launching the project was to uh, set uh, a, a digital platform that enables to provide general information to public about Qsur uh, in order to promote them and to encourage tourism in, the, in these areas uh, and also to provide some technical information to professionals, to uh, researchers and students in order to encourage them to think about doing some research uh, and uh, also some rehabilitation projects uh, in this Qsur. Uh, because uh, as architects or architecture students, when we don't find enough material and enough information about uh, some building or site, uh, it, it hinders us from continuing the research or the work. So when we can find uh, information gathered and pulled uh, and accessible, uh, it will trigger uh, people and incite them to uh, work more on on these villages. Uh, so the projects uh, in the projects we uh, try to use several uh, Wikimedia uh, platforms and tools in order to create some kind of uh, holistic en encyclopedia that gives holistic information about Sur. So I use the uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and uh, Wikidata. Uh, in order to generate different types of information, not only articles, but also a list of Qsur, uh, photo galleries, and an interactive map that uh, allows uh, access to, to information about Qsur. Uh, right. So, yeah. Yeah, so we're looking at the French Wikipedia list exactly. right now in Morocco, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the project began. Uh, it was the first component of this project, a list that uh, includes uh, the majority of Qsur in Morocco uh, mm -hmm. with the most important information 
uh, such uh, geolocation, uh, the most, uh, the, the nearest city to, to this tour, uh, and also their um, states, if they are deteriorated or uh, rehabilitated, and also if they are still populated or abandoned. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when I began the project, uh, only six Xur in Morocco had articles on Wikipedia. Wow. Uh, knowing that uh, Morocco hosts a uh, few hundreds of Xur, like uh, 4,000 Xur and Qasba. Qasba are fortified uh, houses and Xur are fortified villages. So out of 4,000 or let's say a few hundreds, we had only six articles. Uh, but uh, now we uh, could create a few hundreds of articles. Uh, and also we started photo trips in order to uh, document the Daqsur with, uh, with photos. That's great. And that's amazing that, you know, so little of this has been photographed or documented in a methodical way. Yeah. And so tell me a little bit about when you and I met in Berlin, um, that was really interesting because it was, so what state was the project in? Because I remember I was just sitting there and someone, I think, connected you and me and said, yeah. you know, oh, you know, if you want to do something, you should talk to, to Andrew. He's been showing some exactly. other stuff. Like we were mapping some things in Africa related to Wikidata. And I think so we, we put one and one together. But tell me where your project was and, and where Wikidata came into play. Actually, our meeting in, uh, in the summit uh, allowed the project to reach uh, a whole other level. Uh, because in the beginning, I was just uh, focused on creating the list of Wiki, uh, on Wikipedia and trying to include uh, like uh, coordinates only on the Wikipedia article and photos only on Wikipedia article. And right. when we met in Berlin, I dis it was the first time that I discovered Wikidata and especially the query service. Uh, and I was really amazed by the, um, the number and the, the variety of options that the query service can offer uh, especially in this field, because it allows to do some uh, very specific researches uh, in um, a quick time, and also to uh, uh, like to have some the results as uh, photos or uh, as a table or also as an interactive map, uh, and it allows also to create a website based on the the Wikidata query, which is really amazing. Uh, so I, uh, when after we met, uh, I learned the basics of Wikidata and uh, the query service, mm -hmm. uh, and I tried to uh, move my work from Wikipedia to Wikidata. So I started the creation of the items, and I discovered that, for example, on Wikidata, I can uh, find the few tour in Morocco that are uh, constructed in stone because uh, the majority of Qsur in Morocco, for example, are, uh, are in, earth in, uh, in earth architecture. Uh, and uh, Wikidata gives the possibility to find the very few Qsur that are constructed in stone. And this will be uh, very useful if someone does a research or if someone wants to work only about Qsur that are made in stone. Uh, so, um, uh, I, uh, I, like I, I developed the work more in Wikidata uh, mm -hmm. and I started of thinking about moving it from an individual work to a teamwork because I started creating the list by my own. I was creating the items by my, by my own, but then I thought that if I can uh, share this with other architects in Morocco and uh, with other architecture students, uh, this will, first of all, uh, allow enriching the list very quickly and enhancing the content very quickly. It will also uh, teach the students of architecture about volunteering and uh, incite them to the idea of sharing information with others. And also it will let them use the, the material and the, the, the information they, they already have. Because when in architecture school, we actually do some trips to uh, heritage sites and we already have photos, but they remain unused because we just use them for an exercise and then uh, nobody can have access to them. 
So it will allow students to uh, spread their knowledge, to learn volunteering, uh, and also to be more um, interested in our vernacular architecture. Because nowadays we are, um, what could I say? We are like uh, um, invaded by this era of global, uh, globalization in terms of architecture. We always uh, want to do skyscrapers to use uh, concrete and glass and steel but nobody is thinking of um, reinterpreting our local materials and our local know-how and i think right. that by shedding light uh, light on uh, on our vernacular architecture we also invite architects and students to think about it and to maybe reinterpret it in some modern way so uh, i shall say that this project not only enhances the content about uh, these villages, but also it um, reduces the barrier between our architects and students and our heritage. And I think it's, that's what we need the most uh, nowadays. Yeah, that's a great point. And this is a comment that we got on Facebook. It's also a great opportunity for students to take pride in the awesome architectural heritage mm -hmm. of their community. And I think you're also right in that so many um, student projects that were kind of never paid attention to on the side yeah. are much better done in the wiki context. And now you have this whole life beyond that one student project, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. If you want to do your screen share, I can give you control of when you can show things on your screen while I bring up the uh, map for f folks to see here. So yeah. as Nazima mentioned, she was looking for some way to turn those lists of things into something more useful. And that's when I said, well, you know, Wikidata has all this, you know, multimedia mapping ability. And as you said, most people don't even know this, right? It's just kind of this yeah. magical thing that we have under our roof. And as more cultural and heritage folks wake up to it, they say, you know, wow, I shouldn't be living in Wikipedia. I should be living in Wikidata because the capabilities exactly. are pretty powerful. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about these. I mean, you said that one of the nice things about this is you can actually tell, I'm bringing the actual content here in a second. You can actually tell what the materials are that were used, right? So we're looking at the Wikidata item, mm -hmm. and this is exactly what you're talking about right here, right? Yeah. So tell folks about what the power of this is versus if you had it just written in a Wikipedia article that it might have been brick, mud, or something else that... I think, first of all, it, um, it allows to uh, centralize the most important information uh, in a very clear and lisible way. Uh, because I think that sometimes a person is not ready to read a whole article on Wikipedia, a long article. But right. uh, when we have uh, all the information centralized on a table uh, and very clear and visible, this will allow the, the message to to be communicated more quickly and effectively. Uh, and also, uh, the most amazing thing in Wikipedia, in uh, Wikidata is uh, this possibility to do some very specific queries. Uh, as, I, uh, as the example I gave, uh, the Qsur in Morocco are known to be uh, made of mud uh, and of rammed earth, but uh, Thanks to Wikidata, uh, in few seconds, or, or maybe in less than one second, uh, we can find the few Qsur in Morocco that are made of stone. And this right. is amazing. We can also classify the Qsur uh, from the biggest uh, to, uh, to the smallest. Uh, we can also classify them by the number of population. Uh, and it gives, uh, I think it has limitless options of, of uh, specific queries and researches. Uh, and as a professional in the field of architecture, I think this will be uh, very useful not only for students or for people who are interested in subjects, but also for professionals, or I could say even for public organisms who want to uh, start some projects about the Qsur, for example, because if we start, uh, major rehabilitation project of the Qsur of the country, for example, and we want to know what are the five biggest Qsur so we can start the projects in them as a pilot project, uh, we can do it through Wikidata. Uh, but if we just use books 
or uh, written uh, articles, we cannot um, uh, get to this result as quickly as if we use the, the query service. Right, right. So how, how hard or easy was it to learn the query service? You were new to, to the database part. Actually, I cannot say that I'm an expert of the <laughs> query service or of Wikidata, but I tried to learn the basics that allow me to do my queries. And I, I'm, also, uh, I'm always based on the existing queries. Like I just try to change the items and the qualifiers. And mm -hmm. I think it uh, makes the, this easier for, for anyone who wants to learn Wikidata. Right. It's a general and, principle, I find. <laughs> just copy yeah. someone else. That's, that's the best way. Yeah. Absolutely. Like very, very little in Wikipedia mm -hmm. has ever been done from scratch. It's always uh -huh. looking exactly. at other people's work and mimicking <laughs> it. Um, and with some more work, we can even have those color coded on the screen, right? So right now it's all red. You could have them color coded by, you know, the, the material used or, or anything that you want there. Yeah. I didn't know that actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. I'm learning new things with you. <laughs> we'll talk after the call. Um, but yeah, for some folks who haven't seen it, I mean, the nice thing is that you've got that site, which brings up the map, you know, in, in looks like a standalone website, but you can do all yeah. kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, this is a comment that says, um, what does it say? Same in Tunisia. Thanks to, oops, sorry. So for first we had a comment from Algeria and then Tunisia. No, oh, okay. Bring up the Algeria one then. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, there is a story behind this website because mm -hmm. I'm not the one who created it. Oh, okay. Obviously, <laughs> I'm an architect. I don't know how to create websites. <laughs> but um, I participated, participated to uh, Wiki Convention Francophone in Brussels. Uh, and um, along with uh, other uh, Wikimedians from Algeria and Tunisia, we had a presentation about uh, the role of Wikimedia projects in uh, Heritage Safeguarding. So I presented the project. And by the end of the presentation, um, a member of Wikimedia Tunisia proposed to create the website. Uh, and also other members uh, proposed to join the project and uh, they uh, started creating the list of SOAR in Tunisia. Hmm. So I think uh, this is the importance of events and of face-to-face -face meetings and presentations like that because they allow the projects to grow and uh, also to improve. Yeah, I think that's that's a great that's a great comment. It's like a lot of the folks who don't get to go to the face-to-face -face meetups don't understand the value of being able to just walk around one room and have five, six, seven connections to do these types yeah. of things, right? That's great. What was the other comment, uh, Richard, that you had there about Tunisia? Yeah, the other comment was uh, someone chiming same in Tunisia. Thanks to this project, we've become more aware about the Kasur in, in mm -hmm. Tunisia. Although some of the Kasur are very famous and they're used for scenes in uh, Star Wars, they're not very well documented with uh, articles and photos. I actually um, used, when 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 Star Wars was a featured article in English Wikipedia a few years ago, I ended up using the picture of the Kasur from there <laughs> because that was the only public domain photo that we could get of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, you know, so this is, uh, oops, sorry, let me put the screen share again. Right there. So this is the sparkle code as, yeah. you know, generates this map. But you can also put in one line and just show all the mud or all the different types of materials there. And yeah, that's great. So tell us a little bit. Go ahead, Richard. Century, uh, you know, all sorts of other uh, ways we can color it in and maybe find some interesting patterns. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, this is so interesting. You said they're all in the southern portion. Is there a reason why they're in that particular region? Uh, tell us a little bit more about why these clusters exist that you see here. Uh, actually, uh, Earth architecture is very uh, like popular in southern Morocco uh, mm -hmm. and southern Maghreb. Uh, because of uh, the climate conditions and also because of the nature of, the, of these environments. So uh, the architecture of Qsor really reflects uh, the climate and the environment in which it is. And also it is based on some social order because uh, in this uh, areas, uh, these areas were known by the coexistence between Muslims and Jews and between uh, Arabs and Berbers. And uh, if we visit Aqsar of those, uh, we can clearly find uh, the signs of uh, cultural diversity. 
uh, and also uh, some uh, aspects of uh, of uh, like of the co uh, community uh, community life there. Right, and uh, tell us more about the expeditions that you're doing, which is amazing that you're making Expedition. new <laughs> <laughs> or your travel to capture new original content. I call it expedition because I'd love to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I will share with you the dashboard of uh, our photo trip here in Morocco. Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you share your screen? Yeah. Okay. Great. And we're going to add that up there. Great. So lately we had a photo trip to uh, a region in uh, Morocco, which is called Agdes. Uh, and uh, the idea was to start photographing the Qsur that have uh, barely no existence on internet. Um, we choose the most endangered ones uh, and also the ones that are close to each other in order to be able to document uh, the maximum of Qsur in a short time. Uh, and uh, we had uh, eight participants, including me, uh, and four of them are uh, architects, and the other ones are photographs. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the idea, and we had also a member of Wikimedia Tunisia that participated with us in order to be uh, a, uh, aware of the whole process of the trip and to be able to duplicate it in Tunisia. Um, so the idea was to uh, try to photograph uh, the Qsur from uh, all the possible angles uh, and not only to choose like the most beautiful photos or the, or the most beautiful angles uh, because uh, having photos of all the angles of uh, a site or a, a heritage building uh, enable, uh, allows us to create uh, the 3D model of the site or this building through photogrammetry. And uh, for people who don't know what photogrammetry is, uh, it's simply creating 3D models based only on photos of uh, a site or uh, an object. So um, using and using uh, some softwares. So it's a very simple technique uh, that can give some uh, outstanding results because the 3D model is accurate and uh, is very detailed. And it also allows to extract sections and plans. So uh, during our photo trip, uh, we were trying to photograph like the whole details of each village. We had 12 villages uh, and we were uh, uh, divided into groups like uh, ones are photographing only facades. The, other are the others are photographing alleys, uh, some details, uh, general views. Uh, and uh, we could reach uh, in one day and a half uh, 2,000 photos. Uh, and knowing that before, uh, before this trip, uh, there was, there were only uh, 350 photos of Qsur in Morocco wow. on commons. So this is the importance of organizing trips because it allows us in a very short time to massively document uh, some Qsur. And uh, during this trip, we found that one of the Qsur is already uh, completely run down, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think so. Uh, so I think that uh, it's very uh, urgent to document this Qsur as soon as possible before we lose uh, more and more of them. Right. And what are the most, uh, what are the things that are endangering them the most? Is it just erosion or is it development? What kinds of things are threatening these sites Actually, right now? It's the lack of maintenance because uh, for architecture of uh, for earth architecture, it is uh, mandatory to maintain buildings each year. Uh, and when the soil are abandoned by their population, there is no one to maintain the buildings. So uh, they just uh, they are deteriorated by by time. Right. So you're saying, but by the very nature of the construction and exactly. and what they are. They, they, they're not meant to last for like 100 years without maintenance. You need to keep maintaining them, mm -hmm. right? Interesting. So you, you've had mm -hmm. how many trips and how many efforts so far? 
uh, we had uh, one trip and uh, we are planning other trips. The next trip will be uh, in the eastern Morocco. Uh, and uh, there is a third trip that is planned uh, that will cover 100 Qsur in only one trip. Uh, yeah, we wish it to have more participants, like 20 participants, which will be divided on groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this will enable, enable us to document 100 Qsur in only five days. Wow. That's great. And what, and if, I mean, I guess the question is what types of folks would you be looking for to help out and would they need a lot of photographic skills or what would the skill set you be looking for uh, to help out? Uh, the focus will be brought more on architects and architecture mm -hmm. students because uh, in the same time they are producing content and they are getting more and more aware of uh, these villages. Uh, and also people who have uh, photography skills and who travel a lot. Uh, so uh, they can learn how to uh, upload photos on commons and they can use that on not only for uh, this store, but also uh, for all the regions they visit. Right. So it, so it sounds like you're looking for a pretty interesting set of folks. So either folks who know architecture, folks who know photography. And I, uh, but Yeah. And archaeology as well. And archaeology. Right. Yeah. And uh, what time frame are you looking at to try to organize that? Uh, for September or October. Okay, great. And that's something that um, is, uh, how is it being funded and how is it being supported? Uh, actually, this trip was uh, funded by Wikimedia France, uh, right. who is, which that is given um, rapid grants for the Francophone communities. And it was of tremendous help because the process was very simplified. Uh, and uh, it allows uh, projects to uh, like to grow and to to be implemented because we, uh, really without their help I wouldn't be able to organize the trip. Right, right. It would seem like given the uh, the amazing landscape and, and where you're going that that something like drone photography or drone technologies might be useful. Have you done anything in that area so far, or have any ambitions? Unfortunately, drone is not allowed in Morocco. Mm. for public and right. this is the importance of uh, photogrammetry uh, technique uh, and of having the photos from different angles and uh, for uh, of all the details of Tqsarbi because it can be um, a very useful alternative uh, for uh, of drone uh, are you able to uh, to get architectural drawings on on commons that are derived from the photometry um, like so like SVG type type images or things besides uh, photographs? Actually, I'm not sure if it is possible, but I was thinking of uh, including like just uh, JPEG uh, files of, of, uh, of the architectural drawings. Yeah, that'd be good. Because Maybe I'm, still I'm, I'm still a newbie in projects. I yeah. don't know many no. details. Yeah, they're all. I mean, I, I have no idea how to do it, but I know there is someone who knows how to do it. And as soon as someone knows, I convert, say, the JPEGs of if someone takes, takes a photograph of a yeah. architectural drawing and convert it to, to SVG so that people can, we can label them in French and Arabic and English and all the other languages. That's and we can use the same, yeah. Yeah. same uh, format. That's great. And do you have a good estimate of, like, do you, do you kind of have a nice estimate of how many sites you need to capture? Is that pretty well known? Uh, quantity and then you're working towards that or there's still lots to still be discovered in terms of how many sites you need to visit? Uh, the number of sites I know is around 300 in one region. Uh, but I think there is a lot to be discovered because uh, all of them are uh, located in remote areas and we still don't have uh, documentation of all of the villages. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think when the project continues and uh, when we will have uh, more and more income, uh, outcome, sorry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, can, uh, we can be able to contact authorities in Morocco in order to join us in this project. Because there are some organisms who are in charge of uh, the preservation of Qsur. And uh, of course, they, they must have all the information about uh, almost all the villages and uh, having them as partners will be uh, very useful and uh, very effective to the development of uh, of this project. 
Right. But I think right. that contacting them uh, will not be possible unless we have uh, really a very solid base of articles and photos. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask about the, like how much attention have you gotten from authorities and government institutions because, that might be able to help? Yeah, because based on um, uh, earlier uh, experience, it's not very easy to collaborate with authorities in Morocco. Right. Uh, for example, I was we were working on um, a rehabilitation workshop in Qasr Ait bin Hiddu, uh, which is a uh, UNESCO World Heritage, the only Qasr listed as World Heritage. Uh, and we had uh, the permission of, uh, of the house's owners uh, to take measurements of the houses in order to propose some, uh, some projects in, in the village. Uh, and actually, uh, the organism uh, in charge of preservation of the Qsar uh, tried to uh, hinder us from entering to the houses, even mm. though we had the permission of the owners. So... I think it's uh, it's better to do all the work alone, and then when we have outstanding results, we can invite <laughs> them to join us. <laughs> right. Okay, it's good plan. No, I, I think that's a great illustration that there's there's no one size fits all method, you know, when mm -hmm. working for any of these types of projects. You really have to take into account what the local culture and yeah. what the possibilities are. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what, what would you do if you had 10 times the amount of resources that you have now? Like if, if the, a lot of these things were not uh, constraints in terms of cost and uh, mm -hmm. first people hours, like what would you, what would you love to do that you can't do today? Uh, to immediately start photogrammetry workshops. Hmm. Uh, and also to uh, train more trainers in order to launch uh, uh, more photo trips, maybe in the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and also to uh, start developing um, a website that, uh, that is more developed than the actual one. Uh, because we have the idea of uh, uh, moving from the Sparkle queries to uh, a simplified language queries on our websites that mm. allow people who don't know the Sparkle or who don't know Wikidata to do their, to do their uh, researches uh, through the website. For right. example, if I want to find the Qsur that are uh, 16 kilometers far from Zagora city, uh, and I don't know, I don't have any clue about Wikidata, I can do it through a website which will be based on Wikidata. There's a nice list of, um, I don't know if you've seen through them all, but Wikidata front ends uh, mm -hmm. that are listed or people have used of, maybe there's one of those that you could be adapted. Right. Yeah, we can maybe try to introduce you to some of those front ends yeah. that other people have used. But you, but you, I mean, the funny thing is that you, you say that you're not, you don't know all the things in the Wikimedia world, but we don't know anything about photogrammetry software. I mean, that's pretty complex stuff if you think about it, right? So we should be doing more in that area and you, you're you the probably leading in that area for our community. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Do you know, are you using open source solutions for that? I know that Autodesk and these very expensive, comp, you know, expensive packages do these types of things, but it'd be interesting if there's a whole chain of all free software that allows you to go from beginning to end. Actually, I don't know uh, any free software for uh, photogrammetry. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't try to look for free software because uh, I was uh, trained on uh, a specific software and that's what I'm using. Mm -hmm. What system are you using? Sorry? What system okay. is that? What software system has uh, been? It's Photoscan. Photoscan, okay. Yeah. Is that pretty popular among architects or uh, in the field? Not in, not in Morocco. Actually, I had the chance to discover it through a UNESCO workshop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Well, that might be an interesting uh, set of folks who might want to look into that to see if there's a, a whole soup to nut solution that's open source. That'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Someone on the Facebook uh, comment says uh, <laughs> they want to take a tent in the backpack and start working on this project. So I think there could be a whole wiki, a wiki volunteer thing just to do this once we get yeah. out of our yeah, after the There's, coronavirus is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can have you know Wikimania 
in uh, in the Northern Sahara. I there's some interest in the, in the from one of the Facebook comments about doing this in Algeria, both for the Kasurs and for the uh, the Roman settlements. So I think I think there's a lot of uh, outgrowth. Yeah, added. I I got in touch actually with members of Wikimedia Algeria user group, and they are very interested in uh, documenting their Kasurs as well. Mm, great. Oh, nice. And uh, let me say something. Actually, I think that this process of using Wikimedia projects in heritage documentation. Uh, can be also of tremendous value in uh, some uh, countries that are under specific uh, circumstances, like in the conflict zones, uh, and also in uh, countries where the, um, the government is not paying much attention to heritage. So I think that launching uh, this kind of participatory the com uh, documentation of heritage could be very useful uh when it's very hard to document them in um like the the normal way and when it's hard to include the authorities in in the preservation of uh, heritage sites right that's really interesting so it's interesting that there's a there's this cluster or i don't know what four or five here mauritania is that where it is? Yeah. yeah actually in mauritania they are uh, listed as world heritage Oh, wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Are there really hard to get places that you'd like to go to that, that uh, would show up on this map? Or are they pretty much in the areas that you've been to uh, or that you've mapped out so far? No, there are other areas that were not uh, covered yet, especially in Algeria. So deeper into Algeria, like down yeah. in, mm -hmm. wow. That takes quite a bit of travel to get over there. Yeah. Great. So uh, how can we help as a community of Wikimedians do more? I mean, obviously, we can talk about helping with the uh, color coding the map or trying to add more features to browsing the data set, maybe some front ends to make it more user friendly. Uh, but what other things can maybe the community help contribute to in terms of uh, your lists or translation or any kind of technical things? I think what we need most is translation and also technical help because uh uh, like I, I don't know many of the details or of the uh, how to use some tools, and uh, any help in this uh, ter uh, in terms of that would be very welcome. That's great. So we have we had some comments which are kind of fun. We could be glamping. This is a different kind of glamping. It's not glamorous camping. It's galleries, libraries, archives, and museums camping, yeah. which I like. Um, Jan here said some glams are really good at this. Um, unfortunately, whoops, I keep covering up your face. Some glams are really good at this. Unfortunately, there are no 3D formats on commons that support textures. That's true. Our 3D formats mm -hmm. are pretty primitive, unfortunately. I'm sure you know. Um, otherwise, we might see things like this on commons. So we actually have very advanced um, 3D content from glams, but we just don't have the capacity to, to put yeah. them onto commons. I'm sure you've seen that type of problem as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So unfortunately, we're very slow to move when it comes to file formats and support for them in commons. So maybe that's something that we could help with as well. Like if yeah. you have a good recommendation for some things that might help you in terms of accepting more file formats with textures and more high density uh, modeling. You know, right now we only support what one three D file mm -hmm. type. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much for this, and um, I look forward to seeing updates on this. Please do let us know when you're planning those trips out there. I'm sure we could get quite a number of commons photographers to, to go with yeah, you. I, I would so. love to go if we can get out of quarantine <laughs> situation here. Um, but uh, yeah, please do keep us in touch with what you're doing. And we'd love to highlight more stuff that you're, you're up to. Sure. And thank you very much, Andrew, because I think that in some way you were the origin of this project. <laughs> <laughs> All I did was over a beer said, hey, look at this. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be only the Wikipedia list and me trying to add uh, one XR a day. <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, that's what we're trying to do now is to tell everyone it's not just Wikipedia. It's all this other stuff in our movement, yeah. right, that all works together in ways that go beyond the text on the page. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and for, for what you're doing in photogrammetry, I'd love to look more into that and see how you do it. I mean, there's so much that we could do for other domains. Yeah. Um, and strangely enough, you know, I, I was trying to draw the parallel is that in China, they actually have rammed earth structures under threat as well. 
Um, and I think it's similar in that once you go inland and for some communities that don't have access to very, you know, high end building material, they got to deal with the rammed earth and a lot yeah. of maintenance and these deteriorate very quickly. So that's something that, um, that you could use these photogrammetry techniques to, to do, um, do these types of projects in other areas as well. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, thank thanks you. folks for listening. Uh, we actually have lots of. Uh, programming pro programs coming up. This is part of the Wikipedia Weekly network of shows. We have episodes, we have interviews, we've got um, editing sessions, and you can find us on Facebook at the Wikipedia Weekly group, or you can go to Twitter and find us at Wikipedia Weekly there. This video will also be on YouTube for you folks to watch later on. And Nasima, we want to make sure we tell folks about your groups on Facebook as well, right? There's a page for Wiki Kasur, and we also invite folks to take a look at the map there. If anyone has any hints on uh, making the map more interactive or some tools for there, feel free to get in touch with Nasima. I'm sure she'd welcome that help. And yeah, we hope that she'll come back and show us more of her work as the, um, the project gets further along. But it sounds really exciting. And thanks for talking to us about it. Thank you. All right. Talk to you next time on the Wikipedia Weekly Podcast.